In the previous video we have implemented our chase state but our skeleton is unfortunately always aroused and it only waits for the player to chase him. It is so eager that he runs in place to be ready to chase our player. But that, that's not the ideal solution, that's not the ideal way to express our AI. So that's why we need to implement idle state and wander state and transition between those states so we can, for example, disable the run animation at some point. So let's get to it in this video. First of all, let's create a new C -sharp script and let's call it idle state. Let's open it up. Okay, let's delete the content and let's uh, make it extend the state. Great. Now we only want to override the on enable. That's because as I have previously shown you, our skeleton doesn't stop animation and it continues to run. So we need to call movement controller dot move and we will pass a vector 3.0. So it will reset the animation velocity to zero and we need to call agent.target to be null just in case, although it is probably null already. Okay, let's save it. Let's minimize it. So what now? How do we go about it? Let's open the skeleton game object and let's drag our idle state here. Okay, now we have idle state and chase state. But there is an issue, we do not have any transitions between them. So to allow the transition between those two states, let's add one transition to each of those states. Okay. And what we will want to do here is open our idle state. The target will be the chase state. And the condition will be the side condition. So if our skeleton spots our player, it will move to the chase state. But in the chase state, we want to reverse the situation. We want to transfer to the idle state. And to do so, we need to check the site condition. Uh, no, the lost site condition. Okay, so let's uh, enable only the idle state and let's try running it. And unfortunately, we have introduced a bug. So what is causing this? The issue is that we are calling the movement controller move in on enable. So there is a possibility that our skeleton movement doesn't yet run the awake function uh, while the idle state calls the on enable and move while the animator is not yet uh, present we are going to call an animator so if animator is null we are going to call animator equals get component animator and it will be enough for our simple setup uh, for more complex solution, we could change the implementation or modify the script execution order. But for now, let's check if it all works. Let's play. And there should be no more error. And now our skeleton is playing idle animation and standing still. Now let's cross his path. We can see that he is aroused, the indicator gone off. And currently, we are standing outside of his visibility zone. Now let's try running into it and we can see that skeleton is chasing us. Uh, fortunately it is much slower than our player, but still. We can run away, hide on the other side of the wall and we can see that the raycast is shooting through the wall so the skeleton still doesn't seize us. So that's how we can tie the idle and chase state. In the hierarchy we can choose the skeleton and we can see that if he is chasing us, the chase state is on. If, we are, if he lost us, the idle state is on. So the last interesting state to implement is the wander state. So let's go to AI folder and let's choose a script and let's create a wander state. Let's move our script to state machine folder and let's open it up. Not this one, wander state. Okay. Again, let's delete the content and let's inherit from the state. So this will be most complex of our states currently. We will want to have a couple of fields. So public float angle modifier equals one public ball 
is wandering equals false in public float wandering speed equals 0.5 great and last thing we need is vector 3 but a nullable vector 3 so we'll add the question mark and this will make it into a nullable type and it will we will call it direction equals null okay now let's override our update okay B call base update now if is wandering we are going to call if our direction uh, has value because it's a nullable type so we are going to call movement controller dot move and direction dot value dot normalize times wandering speed okay great and we will return now if we are not wandering we will call is wandering to true and we are going to call start coroutine and we are going to call wander around we can call uh, press alt enter to generate this okay and instead of private string we will want to call i enumerator okay and what we are going to do here we are going to call float wonder orientation equals random dot range and we want to go up and implement uh, using random equals unity engine dot random so we will be using unity engine random because there is a conflict between c sharp random and unity random uh, and we are going to call the range from minus 30 degrees to 30 degrees so that's the uh, how uh, different the direction will be times the angle modifier which will be able to extend the range of the rotation of our skeleton next let's call var current rotation equals quaternion dot angle axis and wandering orientation and a vector three dot up so maybe let's change it to new orientation a new rotation okay next we need to call var rotation direction and we need to calculate new rotation times vector three dot forward so what we did here is calculate that the angle at the quaternion from our angle that we want to rotate uh, by and next we have calculated the direction of the rotation by uh, multiplying it by vector 3 forward as the uh, base for our rotation and next we are going to call movement controller dot rotate and we are going to pass the rotation direction so we are going to rotate towards this direction we are going to call direction equals uh, rotation direction so we have uh, set the direction value and we are going to do a couple of steps in this direction so next we are going to yield return wait for seconds and let's pass two as the base we can expose this value in the editor and set it and we need to call a return new let's wait for seconds and we are going to call start coroutine and look around okay this time let's type it so i enumerator look around okay and this will be the second coroutine that will just uh, look around so the skeleton will just uh, look around the map in search of our player and here we are going to call direction equals null next movement controller dot move and uh, vector three dot uh, zero 
So we are going to stop our animation. Float wandering orientation. We can copy this basically uh, code from up here. So we could possibly extract it. So let's maybe uh, choose this thing and right uh, left click quick uh, action and extract method so maybe rotate our agent okay and we can copy this into our uh, look around as well okay and we can now call yield return new wait for seconds and we are going to pass three here again we can expose this value in the editor and is wandering equals false so uh, this calls uh, first coroutine wander around in the update and is wandering around is set to true and if it is true we are moving forward then we will stop at uh, after two seconds we are going to stop moving because we are calling the look around coroutine which will set the direction to null and movement controller to move zero to stop the animation we are going to call a rotate agent and wait for three seconds and actually i don't think it does anything this look around because it will just stand and if we are not moving then the rotation will not occur because we are not calling it in the update but let's see how it works and uh, this is it for the wandering state let's go back to unity and one last thing we need is to create a new c -sharp class called time condition let's open it up and again we can go to our site condition copy the create asset menu attribute place it here extend the condition instead of mono behavior delete the content and change site condition to time condition okay and what do we want to do here well let's create public float time to wait equals 2f uh, and time passed equals 0 and okay now let's create uh, override for our test and here we are going to call because this is called in the update uh, and a fixed update so we can call time passed plus equals time dot delta time and if our time passed is greater or equal to time to wait then we can call time passed equals zero return true otherwise we constantly return false and you can see that we have reset our time passed uh, when we want to call return true so the next time it will it is called the time passed is reset it to zero let's save it let's go back to unity and now what we want to do is add our wandering state to our skeleton uh, when the code compiles and we want to have two states in our idle state so first one was to on site go to the chase state and the second one will be to go to our wander state in the time condition so we need to create conditions time condition time condition a time to wait is two seconds time passed is zero let's go to skeleton and draw, drag our time condition into our uh, element two of the uh, transitions and in the time condition after two seconds it will switch to wandering state and now wandering state uh, have angle modifier is wandering and wandering speed so we will add one transition and again this will be the site condition and on site condition move to chase state let's disable this wander state and let's check if it all works so let's press play and we can see that we have an error that occurs in the skeleton movement 13 so what's going on here where well, basically 
we have our moved script, our skeleton movement script, and we call it on idle state when we load the game and on enable from the idle state class is called and it calls our movement controller and since we go to our move and it uses the uh, animator apparently the awake is called too late and there is an error because animator is empty is null so how do we fix it let's go to unity and let's go to edit project settings and into script execution order in which we want to add and we want to add our skeleton movement as the first script it will be run at 100 the default time and we add a our idle state and we want it to be called later so we want to first call skeleton movement then idle state script apply let's go back okay so let's press play and let's see how this skeleton acts and you can see uh, that it has started wandering but the second part doesn't work it doesn't rotate so i do apologize for that let's see if it is still chases us if it is in wander state yes it is and now it is back to idle state and in a while in two seconds it has started wandering around so our skeleton now has a simple ai implemented so success now as i said before a couple of faults uh, it was supposed to be rotating around when it stays still it doesn't and there is an issue when it collides with an, an obstacle because there is no detection system uh, for if our skeleton is colliding with something so it will keep on going this direction and at some point it will rotate around and just go wander off in another direction so to fix our bug when we are wandering around the code that doesn't work we are going to introduce a rotation speed and movement speed new two variables the rotation speed will be public the movement speed will be private let's set it to 0.1 the rotation speed and movement speed to zero next we are going to instead of call uh, move dot direction value normalize uh, the wandering speed we are going to multiply it by movement speed and next in the wandering around we are going to make the movement speed equal to wandering speed so this is the maximal speed which the skeleton will walk around and in the road uh, sorry in the look around we are going to set mo uh, movement speed to this minimal rotation speed and then we are going to set direction back to rotation direction save it let's minimize the code and let's try playing the game and now we can see that the skeleton is moving and it starts rotating as intended now we could try disabling the animation in some other way but it is better than nothing so we have our wandering uh, behavior implemented in a little better way than the last time of course you can improve on that so there is a lot to improve upon this code as a simple base i think it is a pretty nice AI system that you can implement in many of a small games and it will work quite decently So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to my channel. Please leave comments I am eager to hear from you uh, What do you think about this tutorial? As I said before, if you would like to see how to make a city builder game, I encourage you to check out the links to the Udemy course that I have created. The links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.